Sophie's World is a 1991 novel by the Norwegian author Jostein Garda. Garda was born in 1952 in Oslo. At university, he studied Scandinavian languages and the history of ideas, then became a teacher of philosophy, religion and literature in a secondary school. He produced two children's books in the 1980s, then in 1990 a full-length young adult novel called The Solitaire Mystery about a boy looking for his mother. Sophie's World appeared the following year and it became a global bestseller. It's one of those books that's difficult to categorise, partly in this case because it tries to do several very different things. On the one hand, it's a story about a 14-year-old girl called Sophie who receives lessons in philosophy from an expert in the subject called Alberto Knox. But Sophie and Alberto aren't real. They're existing within a narrative created by another philosopher for his daughter. But perhaps Sophie and Alberto can escape their cage and live in the real world. Of course, that depends on what the term real means. Jostein Garda takes Alberto Knox and his lessons very seriously and presents them in depth, so that as well as being a postmodern story within a story, Sophie's world also works as a fairly conventional history of philosophy. For beginners, it fulfills that function remarkably well, which is probably one of the reasons it sold so spectacularly. Alberto Knox has to put everything into terms a 14-year-old can understand. The two parts of the novel, Surrealist Predicament and Intellectual History, are tied together by the thought of the 18th century Irish philosopher George Berkeley, who appears in chapter 22. Berkeley was an empiricist who held that reality is an idea in the mind of God. That might sound strange, but in fact, for very good reasons, Berkeley is still considered a major thinker today. Sophie's World is an incredibly ambitious book to the extent that it puts its protagonist in a predicament the author may not be able to resolve. I won't give away the ending, but I would recommend it as a primer in philosophy for those who have no prior acquaintance with the subject. As a bonus, it's probably worth reading for its own sake. It's well on its way to becoming a classic.